Well, good morning, folks. Delighted to be here uh, at the Calgary Stampede, joined by the Premiers of the Northwest Territories, Saskatchewan, Ontario, and New Brunswick as we prepare for this week's Council of the Federation starting tonight in Saskatoon. How much opportunity and how many jobs have been lost as a result of investment leaving Canada uh, because of constraints to uh, resource development and uh, and our resource sector, uh, and so we'll be comparing notes on that. We also had some very constructive discussions on uh, promoting free trade within Canada. I think we all share the frustration that there are more barriers to trade, and we've discussed some strategies that we'll be uh, uh, carrying on in Saskatoon about how uh, to, to advance internal trade within Canada and uh, easier mobility for people, including professionals and tradespeople, uh, from coast to coast. Uh, all five of these jurisdictions um, were strongly opposed to recent policies like Bills C-69 and C-48. Uh, reinforces that uh, Alberta has friends and allies across the country, and that's important because we've been uh, we've, had, we've been going through some fears, and I want Albertans to understand that we are not isolated, that we have allies, including other premiers who could not make it to this meeting, um, but uh, who share our desire for a prosperous economy and a fair deal in the Federation. Just a quick word. Responsibility do you take for uh, the appointments linked to Dean French? Uh, given that you're chief of staff, it's in your office. <laughs> you know, something I think I addressed that pretty quickly. As a matter of fact, I addressed that immediately when we're in Toronto. But my friends, we aren't here to talk about Dean French. You know, we're here. Uh, we're we're we're, we're well, we're we're here, and I just addressed that. We're here to talk about internal trade. This is the first opportunity this country's ever seen in recent memory that from coast to coast, from the east to the west, we have like-minded premiers, like-minded premiers that want their provinces to thrive. This is incredible for the entire nation. It's incredible that we can sit down again with like-minded premiers and knock down the barriers of trade and make sure that, that this province of Alberta, Ontario and the rest of the provinces thrive. And what I always said, I said to Jason Kenney, and first of all, I want to, I want to thank the Premier for inviting us here. Uh, the people of Alberta are absolutely incredible. When Alberta does well in the energy file, the whole country does well. And that's what we have to focus on. We have to focus on unleashing businesses, getting government out of the way, cutting red tape, cutting regulations. Right now in Ontario, our economy is on fire. It's thriving. We're short for the first time. Even though we inherited an absolute financial mess, our economy is thriving. We created 187,000 jobs in a year. We need over 200,000 more people in Ontario to fill the jobs. We have a labor shortage, actually, in Ontario. And we're going to work hand in hand, each premier, to share best practices. Uh, we have the greatest country in the world. We can compete against anyone in the entire world. And again, first time in recent memory, we have like-minded premiers, and we're going to support each other. And I have a message for the people of Alberta. Ontario has your back. Sorry, but what Thanks. does it say about your office that this happened under your watch? Um, you may again, not want to talk about Dean Frank. But I well, I, I, know, I know in the media you want to get into the weeds. Do you really think when I walk down the street in Alberta, people worry about Dean French? Do you think they worry about anything? Do you know what they worry about? They worry about a job. They worry about how Alberta was destroyed by the previous administration. And thank God we have Premier Kenny here to turn the corner, similar to Ontario. In Ontario, we have the largest sub, we, sit, we still have the largest sub sovereign debt in the world, 347 billion. We had $15 billion deficit that we inherited. That's what the people of Ontario worry about. They don't worry about the stuff that the media worries about. They worry about can they put food on their table, can they pay the mortgage, and right now our economy is booming. We passed 20 pieces of legislation in less than a year. It's unheard of. It's unheard of. Great legislation fixing health care, fixing education. Tom Brady. Premier Ford, when you refer to these 10 collaborative premiers from coast to coast, does that include the guy in D.C.? Well, we're, we look forward to working with uh, uh, Premier Hogarth. We, we really, uh, Horgan, sorry, uh, Premier Horgan. I apologize. Premier Horgan. Uh, I met him last year. Uh, John's a great guy, and uh, we're going to work with him because he understands when the rest of the country booms, BC will boom. 
and we look forward to working with uh, the Premier. I, I, could I, if I could throw something in on that? Uh, we had pretty constructive discussions with Premier Horgan at the Western Premier's Conference two weeks ago, and I was very pleased that he signed on to our communique language about the need for economic corridors, including to move Canadian energy. Uh, so uh, I think we have. So, I think we we can continue to work with Premier Horgan. He's certainly in favor of LNG exports, but he knows what our position is on on oil very clearly. Premier Kenny was invited to this gathering. Uh, we invited a number of, of of Premier. Some others couldn't make it for scheduling reasons, but we'll all be meeting up tonight in uh, Saskatoon at the Council of the Federation. This was just a brief and fairly informal get together of some of, some like-minded premiers to talk about uh, jobs, growth, and prosperity. Uh, but uh, we we hope that we'll be be able to uh, to have fruitful discussions with all of our colleagues starting tonight under uh, Premier Mo's chairmanship. Were all of Premiers um, We were fo focused on people who support uh, responsible resource development, pipelines, corridors, and are concerned about the carbon tax, and that's the vast majority of Premiers. Mr. Mo, Mr. Mo, is this the uh, conservative tone you want to set for the Council of Federation? Uh, you know, uh, with respect to the conversation that we were able to have here today, and I guess uh, first and foremost, I, I would like to thank uh, Premier Kenny uh, for the invitation to come to Stampede. Uh, I, I have understood for years and heard that the uh, the pancakes at the Premier's uh, breakfast are divine, and I can attest <laughs> that they most certainly are. And so we had a, a great opportunity to experience uh, the, the Stampede itself yesterday, as well as uh, to, to converse with many people that uh, used to live in Saskatchewan, yeah, as it turns exactly. out. Um, and, um, but, our, but our industries uh, do operate across borders as well as there's many industries many businesses that are operating in our province that that ultimately are headquartered out of Calgary and other places uh, across the nation um, with respect to uh, uh, entering into the Council of Federation um, and and this meeting here today this this is an important piece of engagement and and our, as I said our industries operate uh, across our provincial borders which really uh, begs uh, the 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 engagement that we have at this meeting and we had a couple of weeks ago at the at the western canadian uh, western and northern uh, premiers meeting in edmonton um, we need to continue to advocate to have these tables of discussion in, in canada um, we have great diversity when you when you look at how we generate wealth in our communities from coast to coast so as we move forward uh, we were thrilled as, a, as i was thrilled as a premier of saskatchewan to to, uh, to, to participate in this meeting today. I was, I was thrilled uh, a couple of weeks ago to participate in the, the Western and Northern uh, Premier's meeting. Thrilled to, uh, to, uh, to chair and host the, the Council of Federation meeting starting this evening. And we'll advocate for more of these tables across the nation, if you will, a number of Premiers coming together to talk about areas of interest that we have as, as we have uh, you know, energy, energy resources that we've, we've talked about that are, are being produced in Alberta and Saskatchewan. Uh, we've been fierce advocates to, to be able to transport those energy resources to a, to a place like St. John, New, Br New Brunswick, where they can add value to that product, provide it to, to other Canadians, uh, and provide it to other people around the world. Provide them with, with some of the most sustainable energy product that, it, that is produced in the world. So those are some of the discussions that ultimately we'll have at this table with Premier Higgs involved. Um, there will be other uh, trade-related discussions that we would have at, at different tables that we would have across the nation. So this isn't, a, this isn't a, uh, an ideological uh, a table that we're sitting at. This is a table of mutual interests on how we can continue to, to create wealth in, in the communities that we represent. It comes from, it comes from Premier Ford that that's exactly what this is. This is to get, bring like-minded people together to talk before the Premier's conference. Like-minded people that want to advocate for the growth of our economy, the growth of our jobs in our communities, and the growth of, mm -hmm. of creating the, the, the accessibility to the sustainable resources, whether it's energy, whether it's agri-food products, whether it's automobiles that are produced in, in, uh, in Ontario, to create the, the opportunity for the rest of the world to access uh, those high-quality, competitively priced, very sustainably produced, uh, uh, manufactured and, and produced goods that we have. Kenny, Kenny, do you have any concern that this is going to set up a, a two-party kind of uh, thing at, at, in no. Saskatoon, that you're going to be... No, this like-minded and not no, like-minded? No, no, not, not at all. This is not about parties. This is uh, about prosperity. Uh, these are some of the premiers, the major vast majority of whom uh, have common uh, concerns and interests about economic growth, job creation, responsible resource development. Yeah, I want to remind you it was uh, nine of the ten provincial premiers, in addition to uh, um, Premier McLeod of the territories, you had ten of 13 premiers sign, uh, expressing concern about bills C-48 and C-69. You've got uh, a, ma a majority of uh, provinces, representing the majority of the population, concerned about the imposition of a federal carbon tax. You've got 
I think we're, we're very, well, we'll see the actual number in Saskatoon, but I think we've got uh, the overwhelming majority of provinces in favour of the idea of energy and economic corridors across the country. Uh, you've got, uh, uh, so a growing coalition of provinces and territories, not all represented here this morning, uh, who share common goals for their citizens, which is jobs and prosperity, responsible resource development, partnerships and prosperity. And, and and well, this was this is an informal chance to gather. Uh, in advance, we carry, we can continued with some of the discussions we had at the uh, the Western Premiers Conference. I know my colleagues in uh, New Brunswick, in Ontario, in Eastern and Central Canada, uh, are interested, for example, in how we work the uh, the New West Partnership Agreement for trade. Mm -hmm. So uh, and 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 we have. Uh, down east, a province that wants to get Alberta energy, and a central mm -hmm. Canadian province that's willing to help us ship it. So we have some common interests that we we can dis we were able to discuss. Uh, we'll also enjoy some Western hospitality, and uh, I'm so glad that these uh, colleagues took the time to do so. Can I ask a related follow-up, please? Um, why did you make a decision to not uh, ban uh, conversion therapy uh, provincially and leave it up to municipalities to do so? Our position on that is exactly the same as, as the NDP's was. They were in office for four years, uh, and uh, so our position is the same as the NDP's. We're going to go to the phones. Wait, oh, sorry, we're going to go to the phones. Operator, can you please put through the first caller? The first question is from Lucas Meyer with News Talk 1010. Lucas, your line is now open. Huh. Thank you for taking my question. Happy Stampede, everyone. Thanks, Lucas. Uh, <laughs> uh, the Premier Ford, the reason why we're asking these questions because you did not take questions on them last week. So I just wanted to pick her again one thing with Dean French. Initially, the government said that you resigned, but then last week, two of your ministers said that you, quote, took action when the revelations were revealed. So just to be clear, did he actually resign, or did you fire him or ask for his resignation? Well, let's be very clear. Uh, Dean French is no longer there. Uh, we we changed our chief of staff. Uh, Jamie Wallace is our chief of staff. He's a... A, a great chief. Uh, I think the uh, cabinet uh, gets along quite well with them. So does the caucus. Uh, we're we're moving forward, and my my goal here, my goal is to focus on our economy, not about uh, getting into the the weeds and what the media likes to to do. Probably 99% of the time. Uh, again, the people that listen to News Talk 1010, Lucas. Uh, don't worry about that. Do you know what they worry about? They worry about if the economy is going. They worry that the previous government left us with a $347 billion debt. They worry about the previous government losing 300,000 jobs. We do over $300 billion of trade. We're number one uh, trading partner to 19 states, number two to nine other states. They're becoming competitive. They're lowering their corporate tax rate. They did down to 21%. Uh, they're cutting red tape regulations. That's who we're competing against. I've met over 25 governors. Uh, right across the, uh, the country, I should say. $50 billion, it would go right down the GDP. They, actually, it was $50 billion to $120 billion. That goes 4% right down to the G GDP. That's better than any USMCA deal there is. Let's start focusing on our own country. Uh, we'll go back to the floor. Go ahead, Rick. Uh, what does this, what message are you trying to send to Trudeau and his government by having this meeting where you're, you have common cause on so many issues? What messages are you trying to tell the federal government by having this meeting? Or what, what should they get? What should they get from, have, from viewing this meeting today? The message of this meeting for ordinary working people is that there are a lot of provincial governments trying to create jobs, growth and prosperity. This is not about the Prime Minister. Uh, a number of us have differences of opinion, strong differences of opinion with the direction of the federal government and the way it's damaged particular resource industries. And uh, we've expressed those differences with our, uh, for example, the joint letter on uh, Bill C-68 and C-48 uh, C and C-69, which was signed by all of the, the premiers at this table. Uh, we, um, we, many of us have differences with the federal government on the carbon tax, which, uh, will be, which we talked about today. Uh, I, I think that my hope is that the current federal government returns to its initial promise of a cooperative approach to federalism. Um, none of us, nor do our citizens, appreciate a message that it's either Ottawa's way or the highway. 
a lot of us, I think all provinces and territories at this table have been prepared to work with Ottawa mm -hmm. on reducing uh, carbon emissions and greenhouse gas emissions. We'll be having uh, more in-depth and broader conversations in the couple of days ahead at the Council of Federation. Um, but, you know, let, let's, let's face it, there are a number of headwinds that are coming uh, to the tax and regulatory structure that we are operating in in many of our industries, uh, not just specific to Western Canada. Premier Higgs uh, would most certainly add that he's being affected at the uh, at the refinery end as well with most notably the, the uh, most recent natural gas uh, regulations that came out but uh, you know we talk Premier Kenny had said 10 of, of 13 uh, provinces had intervened uh, with respect to C69 and and the challenges that that would pose to the wealth creating industries in in their jurisdictions the C48 the the uh, the West Coast tanker bill that has been put forward uh, these are all challenges that that we are facing in our in our industries that are creating wealth most notable among those is is the carbon taxation policy that the the federal government has put forward and and we had a, a decision a split decision in the province of Saskatchewan recently we are taking that forward um, we're taking that forward to the Supreme Court of Canada we saw an intervention uh, announced announcement here this morning in Quebec uh, also believes this is an infringement in provincial jurisdiction of which uh, we also believe uh, the federal government is in an area that isn't theirs uh, to ultimately operate. There's a variance of opinions across across the nation but the fact of the matter is is, is uh, we are going to come together um, with our with our ministers of justice in the in the weeks ahead to ensure that we are going to be putting forward the best presentation to the to the Supreme Court and those uh, those that are inter intervening will be invited to come together to collaborate to ensure that we are putting forward uh, the most the, the the strongest case possible to the Supreme Court of Canada on behalf of the industries and the people that we represent that are working uh, working and earning uh, their family their family incomes uh, in the in just such in just such industries. I just wanted yeah, to what? correct myself. I said. Uh, the joint letter was on C69 and C48. It was only on C69. Right. Uh, the No More Pipelines law, um, I fused the two issues together in my own mind, but they, uh, C48 primarily, or ex exclusively aff affects Alberta, so I shouldn't have spoken for other provinces. En français, we have time. D'une part, qu'est-ce que ça veut dire de vous voir tous les cinq comme ça en conférence de presse? Quel message vous envoyez au gouvernement fédéral de Justin Trudeau? Et est-ce que ça peut nuire à Andrew Scheer? Écoutez, je, je, c'est pas aujourd'hui, c'est pas une question de, des politiques électorales euh, du fédéral. C'est une question de des politiques euh, de croissance économique que nous partageons comme euh, province et territoire. Euh, il y a une majorité des provinces qui préfèrent les politiques euh, de pro croissance euh, pour la création d'emplois, pour le développement responsable des ressources naturelles, pour les corridors des, des ressources et euh, contre la taxe sur le carbone. Alors, nous, penche, nous, nous mettons l'accent sur les, les enjeux, pas, pas sur les personnalités, euh, ni, euh, ni les, les politiques électorales. C est, c est, ça, ça envoie pour moi un message important aux Albertains que nous avons les alliés partout au Canada pour le développement responsable des, des ressources naturelles. Je suis très reconnaissant du... Euh, uh, position, par exemple, de M. Uh, Higgs et, les, et autres premiers ministres de région atlantique en faveur du uh, uh, oléoduc à l'est du Canada. Je suis très reconnaissant de position du premier ministre Ford en faveur de l'énergie East ou, ou, ou les projets semblables. Ah non. Alors, c'est un entretien constructif. Uh, sur ces questions urgentes au plan économique, ce n'est pas une ingérence dans les politiques fédérales. One more, one more, we have time for one more question. L'Ontario et la Saskatchewan qui ont perdu récemment leur cause devant les tribunaux dans le dossier de la taxe sur le carbone. Ce matin, on apprenait que le Québec, vous l'avez mentionné, M. Mou, que le Québec allait se joindre dans la cause de la Saskatchewan en Cour suprême. À quel point êtes-vous confiant de remporter votre cause en Alberta, étant donné l'échec des deux autres provinces? Uh, on a décidé d'avoir euh, nos ministres de justice euh, à, à discuter les stratégies euh, quant à, aux, dé, euh, euh, aux efforts, les, les, const, les contestations, excusez-moi, sur les contestations judiciaires de taxes sur le carbone du fédéral. Nous autres en Alberta, nous croyons que nous avons un bon euh, argument à faire, particulièrement euh, quand on considère euh, le tarif que nous imposerons sur les grands émetteurs. Um, what, what 
you'll have to work with them. Obviously, you might be sure. a little close on the same page, but it's not. I mean, it's not a cut and not parallel here. So, what's that relationship like? Well, not every province nor every party agrees with everybody all the time, but there's a fairly broad agreement here about the need for policies that create good paying jobs in part through responsible resource development, getting our resources to global markets and defending taxpayers. And uh, so it's only natural that we would compare notes on some of those points. We are also, uh, the, the folks here and, and many of our other colleagues we'll be seeing in Saskatoon, really want to move from talk to action on internal trade and labour mobility within Canada. So there's a lot of common interests. And I, I, I said to Prime Minister Trudeau when uh, we spoke the day after my election and, in Ottawa, and when we met in Ottawa a week later, uh, that um, after my, excuse me, after I was sworn in, uh, that I hope we can find common ground. Un unfortunately, unfortunately, his government decided to proceed with two bills that are, have an absolutely devastating impact to this province, bills C-69 and C-48. Instead of meeting us halfway, on an approach to uh, uh, the, the climate change challenge, we were, we're being dictated to by Ottawa. This is not the cooperative federalism that he promised in 2015. And so uh, speaking for Alberta, uh, I, I, I know Albertans would strongly prefer a federal government that listens to and respects the provinces and a government that is not uh, uh, damaging jobs growth and investment through policies like this. And that's one of the, I think that's a, certainly Alberta's view. Uh, one more time. Excuse me, if, uh, if I could answer your question. Uh, in the Northwest Territories, we have consensus government, so it's in our interest to uh, make sure we know what every party is, will be uh, making available for the Northwest Territories. So we stay, uh, try to stay in good terms with all of the federal political parties. So, and, uh, each of us are unique. Uh, we, we are supporting a carbon tax. We're trying to get it through or carbon pricing. We're trying to get it through our, our legislation assembly. And we're part of this group because we're very concerned about the loss of jobs, the investment, uh, the level of investment that's dropped significantly in the Northwest Territories and the fact that our population is declining. So we have to, we know that if the energy Industry in Canada doesn't recover. We're going to be in trouble. So we are working with all of the our southern provinces to to move ahead. Just Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have to leave it there. I just could add a point. Just as Bob has supported us on uh, the concerns around C69 and the tanker ban, we've supported Bob, whose whose territory was sideswiped by the imposition of a federal a moratorium on. Uh, oil and gas exploration in his territory without territorial consultation. So these are the kind of issues where we, I think, are, are uh, have common cause. Lady, balancing? I mean, you are probably seeing it firsthand uh, more than any other area in Canada. Climate change and the impacts from it. So how are you balancing that concern with the concerns that you're talking about here? Well, you hit the nail right in the head. We are, the, in the territories, we are the most affected by climate change, yet we contribute the least amount of greenhouse gases. So I've said it many times, we are making a concerted effort to educate Southern Canadians like yourself, who probably are not as affected on a daily basis by climate change. And we know it's in our interest to make sure that you all understand that what your lifestyle affects us and we have a right, we live, a, we live up there, and uh, we have a right to make a living. We ask our children to go to school, and then when they come back, we have our, keep our end of the bargain that there be jobs and opportunities for them. We don't keep our end of the bargaining by moving out and having, say, move south to, to make a living. So. You know, I, I would like to, I'd like to add to that, um, because in, in, uh, in New Brunswick, we've had a couple years now consecutive record flooding situations. And, and, I, and I'd like to say that, you know, in this group here and in, in any group across the, the country, none of us are, are denying climate is changing dramatically in Canada and throughout the world. So, and, and every one of us are focused on meeting our mission targets. The only strategic difference here is that we believe that we can do so and we are meeting those targets, but not through taxing people more, but through innovation, that energy pays for innovation. 
We believe we're in the middle of a transition economy here where we need to work in order to invest and see innovation start to move us to the next generation. Is, is the climate going to improve next year if we raise a carbon tax? No, it's not going to change. It took a long time to get here. But all of a sudden, there's this will by the current government to just tax people more and think it'll get better because everyone will feel like I'm, I'm playing a, a guilty tax here. We all are focused on emission reductions, every one of us. I, in, in New Brunswick, we're at 28% uh, of our 30% target for 2030. So we're almost there now. And our, we've put together an output-based pricing model that meets the federal requirements, but yet they have not accepted it. And they haven't accepted it because they, they want us to impact people every day in their lives by paying more to get through a province that doesn't have rural transportation, doesn't have the large urban centers, but has an opportunity to continue to thrive and survive. We have the largest refinery in the country that can't get access to Canadian crude. We have a system here that we are not united as provinces to grow our country the way it's always been strong. Innovation will be funded by energy development and using what we have in our country to make it work. And I'm proud to be part of a team that's standing up for a united Canada, once again working from coast to coast to coast to make it happen. And it's unfortunate we have these strategic blocks. And in New Brunswick, I feel like a, str a stranded asset most times. And that's why I'm here. And I've been excited to be part of this team. And I'm excited to think that Canada is going to be on the move once again in the near future. With that, ladies and gentlemen, we're out of time. Thanks very much, folks. Appreciate it. Have a good one. Thanks.